In this video, we're going to start off with the hyperbola by revising what you did in grade 10. The standard form of the equation of a hyperbola looks as follows. y is equal to a over x plus p plus q. In grade 10, we had a look at the transformations that a and q indicate. Here we have the mother graph of the hyperbola, y is equal to 2 over x and it's in the first and third quadrant. As the a value increases, the graph moves further away from the axes. This a value can of course also be negative, which would indicate a reflection around the x-axis. So, if we make this a value negative, you will see that the two parts of the hyperbola now lie in the second and fourth quadrant. A hyperbola has two asymptotes, an asymptote is a line that the graph moves closer to but can never touch. The first asymptote is the line x is equal to 0 or then the y-axis and in this case the second asymptote lies on the x-axis at y is equal to 0. Then the hyperbola also has two axes of symmetry meaning a line that we can fold the graph on to have two mirror images. These two are the lines y is equal to x and then y is equal to minus x. These axes of symmetry and asymptotes will always move with the graph as it translates vertically or horizontally. We already know that the q value moves the graph vertically up or down. In this case, we have a q value of 2. And you can see that the graph, along with the horizontal asymptote and the two axes of symmetry, moved up two units. The vertical asymptote of x is equal to 0 stayed the same as the graph did not move left or right. So in the equation of the hyperbola, the a value shows us whether we'll be working in the first and third or second and fourth quadrant. The Q value moves the graph vertically up or down. Here we have two axes of symmetry and both of them are influenced by the Q value. And the hyperbola also has two asymptotes of which only the horizontal asymptote is influenced by the Q value. So let's have a look at all the important concepts that you need to be able to identify in a hyperbola. Firstly, you need to be able to find the x and y intercept. In our example, the x intercept is given as the coordinate 3 and 0. And for a hyperbola that has not moved left or right, there is no y intercept. As we've just mentioned, a hyperbola has two axes of symmetry. Firstly, the line y is equal to x plus that q value of minus 2 and then y is equal to minus x plus the q value. When looking at the asymptotes, we've seen that for the grade 10 graphs, which haven't moved left or right, the first asymptote stays at x is equal to 0. The second asymptote moves up and down along with the q value, so that will be at y is equal to minus 2. A hyperbola does not have a turning point, like a parabola. So this means that the graph will always stay increasing right through or decreasing right through. In the examples case, the graph moves down as we move from left to right, which means it is a decreasing graph. This graph decreases for all x values. And then of course we move to our domain. This describes all the x values that form part of the graph. For a hyperbola, all the x values are part of the graph, except of course for that x value at the asymptote, so in this case x can never be equal to 0. The same goes for the range. The range consists of all the y values, except for the asymptote, which in this case was at minus 2. Next, let's go and sketch a hyperbola. Sketch the following function and indicate the intercepts with the axes, axes of symmetry and asymptotes. I always start off thinking about a rough sketch for this graph 
and then I start with the asymptotes. In this case, there's a plus 2, which means we have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 2. Next, I have a look at the sine of the a value, which is 6. The sine is positive, and that means that if I focus on the intersection of my two asymptotes, this graph will lie in the first and third quadrant. This means that there is an x-intercept that we need to calculate. We already know that there is no y-intercept because the graph did not move left or right. And to determine the x-intercept, like always, we change the y-value in the equation to a 0 and then solve x. Firstly, I'll subtract the 2 on the left-hand side. And now I need to get that divided by x out from under the denominator by multiplying by x on the left. This means that x is equal to minus 3 and the x-intercept is at minus 3 and 0. So when drawing the sketch, I once again start with my asymptotes at y is equal to 2 and at x is equal to 0 or the y-axis. Next, the hyperbola lies in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. And my x-intercept is at minus 3, 0. Always ensure that you indicate at least one coordinate on each part of the hyperbola. So now I'm going to choose a positive x value to substitute to get a coordinate on my top half. When I substitute 1 into the equation, the y value is 8. Lastly, we need to indicate the axes of symmetry. Remember that these two lines intersect on the intersection of the two asymptotes. The first axis of symmetry will then be the one with a positive gradient of 1 plus the q value. And the second axis of symmetry will have a negative gradient of minus 1 plus the q value. 